Okay, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday night, April 13th. Uh, item number one on the agenda, our minutes of the meeting of March 23rd. How say the board? Move the approval. Second. 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 Any edits? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Right. And the rest, this is now on the consent agenda, and we'll see if anybody's here who would like to speak on any of these items. First of all, the appointments of new election workers. Robert Bluen, uh, Precinct 10. Wu Chong, Precinct 10. Judith Highland, Precinct 9. William Stalkup, Precinct 11. A request to permit for the Memorial Day Parade on Monday, May 25th, 2015 by Jeffrey Chung Lo, Director of Veterans Services. A request for a one-day beer and wine license, May 27th at the Regent Theater for the 6th annual Ciclismo Classico Bike Travel Film Festival. And finally, a request for a one-day all-alcohol license on May 9th at the Robbins Memorial Town Hall for the Waldor Waldorf School of Lexington, their spring benefit auction. <coughs> Is anybody here wishing to speak on any of those matters? Anybody want to give a commercial for any of those events? How say the board? Move approval. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. 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 All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, all approved. Appointments to the Conservation Commission. Uh, Michael Noni. Michael, come on up to the microphone if you would please, Michael. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Michael, if you wouldn't mind, would you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Yep. Uh, my name is Michael Nani. I grew up in Arlington. Uh, I currently reside uh, right next to the Capitol on Mass Ave. Um, I'm currently a, an associate member of the Conservation Commission. We've had uh, somebody express, a voting member express interest in resigning or stepping down to associate. So we'd like to uh, promote my, you know, promote kind of with, from within. So. Um, I have worked in landscape design and horticulture for 15 years. I have a strong interest in conservation, so I feel I'm a pretty good asset to the, to the, con, to the uh, CONCOM. I'm sure you'd be an excellent asset, as you already have been. Thank you very much for your interests. Move approval. Uh, move approval. Is there a second? Second. Anybody want to grill poor Michael? <laughs> yeah. No? Okay, yeah. Michael looks good. Oh, oh, someone does. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Dunn. Just want to thank you for volunteering. Uh, I've read your resume, and you are absolutely qualified, and you think you're going to be great for it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you very much. Uh, an appointment to the tree committee. Becky Edmondson. Becky, welcome. Hi. Hi. Aye. Same thing, would you tell us a little bit, please, about your love of trees, Becky, um, or anything else? Well, you got my bio. I grew up in a tree, is what I say. And that's, that's <laughs> far from the truth. I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, and there were magnolias across the street from us in what was called the Pink Palace then. And I was out there all the time, and magnolias are wonderful to climb in, branches all the way to the bottom, they sway at the top. Um, I've lived in Arlington 19 years. Um, I recently retired, so I have time to devote now to some of my other interests. Um, I love uh, the natural world, uh, trees and native plants and habitat conservation. I serve on the board of Menominee Rocks Park as co-chair of the stewardship committee, and Mariana Foskett and I uh, can be seen ripping out invasive plants all summer long. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Um, I don't know what else to say. Any you did not fall from a tree and injure that wrist or anything? No, souvenir of Costa Rica. Uh, <laughs> I'll wow. say the board. Move approval. Move approval. Is there a second? Questions for Becky? Other than to express a great deal of thanks for your willingness to serve, Becky. Thank you very much. Best of luck to you. You're welcome. Thank All you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any magnolias in Arlington? Yes. Broward's Beauty. Uh, there's there's some um, some native southern magnolias that are dwarf in stature uh, and can can deal with our climate um, 
Ted Segan has one. I don't know if any of you know him. I know. Um, he's been on the yeah, board before. Out. So you see them around, but most of our magnolias are Chinese. She's oh, there's one, Magnolia Virginiana. It's, it's, it's native, but it's native to swampy areas. So. Kevin, did she pass? Yeah. I think <laughs> qualify. <laughs> I just want to say you were correct in all that you just said. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, licenses and permits, a request for a food vendor license from Sweet Haven. Yep, please come forward. Excuse me. Good evening. My name Hi. is uh, Jamal Wadani. I moved to the United States in 1984. I live in Cambridge, and I was in the food business for 14 years, and I moved to the limo business for almost 11 years, and now I'm, I'm in the candy business. So. Okay. Questions? Move approval. Move approval. Second. Second. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, Steve. Thank Go. you very much, Mr. Greeley. Um, and thank you. This is uh, really cool. I. Um, Always like seeing new types of businesses come to town. So thank you very I wish much. you the best of luck, and I can't wait to see your selection. I appreciate it. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Yes, Joe. And I'll just say that I, th I think that the, those beautiful lights you have in the front have brought a lot of joy to uh, a number of people have commented on them. I was wondering this, so thank you. Well, well, we're not done with you yet. <laughs> 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 It's iffy now. I know. <laughs> no. Any uh, from the board? Anything else? Because you know what I'm going to say, don't you all? Yes. Any sam samples? Samples. Uh, <laughs> no. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Next time. Okay. I'll give it to him. He'll bring it. Uh, yeah. Thank you very thank much for choosing our and best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Appreciate uh, all it. those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed. I believe that was uh, Mr. Byrne who moved approval. Correct. Yes. Okay, uh, item number nine, uh, we're going to ask to table move that to item. Table. Uh, move to table Second. by Ms. Mahan. Second. Uh, just we need a little bit more uh, work on that. Item number 10, the draft liquor license suspension decisions. Mr. Douglas Hine. So uh, as the board will recall, um, at the last elections meeting, you had a hearing uh, with respect to three Arlington establishments that failed alcohol compliance checks. I draft a decision that um, I think reflects the board's overall thinking on this matter. I do want to note that there, um, there was a, an issue that maybe there was some ambiguity about, and that was with respect to whether or not the board uh, was going to determine the uh, exact uh, date that the suspensions would be served. In other words, this board voted that the suspensions would be served starting on the day of the week in which the violations were committed. In this case, it was a Thursday for all three. However, uh, the board did not vote to say that they will start on Thursday, May 7th. Um, and so the board could uh, afford these uh, establishments the latitude to decide it will be May 7th or it'll be the, they'll do it on the following Thursday, as has been consistent with past board decisions. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know that I, that was an area of some ambiguity, um, and uh, that can certainly be easily adjusted by this board if, you, if, if it so chooses. Okay. Mr. Byrne. Um, thank you. That's actually um, what I was thinking about when I was reading through um, your memo, Counselor. And I, while I'm completely comfortable giving leeway and not saying that has to be on the 7th, I, I would be a little bit more comfortable if we put an end date on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, you know, while I don't think any of these restaurants would actually, you know, do this, but they could essentially just postpone it for eternity and never actually serve the suspension. So um, perhaps, you know, I'd be happy to, uh, you know, support by the end of the year or, or something along those lines. So, Mr. Carroll? Uh, yes, thank you. I, I, I had similar thought, but I was just wondering, maybe it just makes sense to say by the end of the license period, at, with the understanding that we would not renew the license if, it, if it's not um, executed at that point. Right. Uh, Mrs. Mahoney. Which I think is the same as the end of the year. So it's, it's, yeah. um, I, I would just ask my colleagues to entertain, um, just in the sense of having so much time um, and where things can get lost as well as administratively keeping on keeping track of it if we say um, within perhaps no more than two or three months uh, but, but I'd be, I'm afraid if we wait to the end of the year we may be adding more work for the selectman's office to say did you do it yet did you do it yet so 
I have no. Okay, Mr. Dunn. I, I'm definitely along the lines of Ms. Ohan, even shorter. I would say like in the month of May, like something like that. I, I'm. Um, so the only time that I would be hesitant to like force a date is if it was landing on like a major holiday weekend that was a large revenue weekend. I have no particular reason to hit one of those weekends as opposed to another one. Um, but in May, you can find a weekend that's appropriate for you. And so, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll vote for any of these dates in particular, but I, I would definitely be pushing for a sh shorter term. Remind me why we want to give them this leeway. Um, it, it just came up in the discussion last time. I, I know. I'm, I'm not... I'm not saying that we have to give leeway. I'm saying that I'd prefer just to put an end date on it. Yeah. The reason to do an end date is is simply because we, not knowing their business, may hit a date that is particularly important to them. You know, if you've scheduled a, your, an event and you've got you've rented it out for some particular event, I have no particular reason that I would want to cause that type of harm to their business. Okay. And it's going to be their responsibility to inform us of when they will not be serving the alcohol. Is that no. correct? Okay. So, so who's got a motion? Mr. Mr. Chair, Chair I, I move to um, uh, a, a, approve the, um, the decisions as written by council um, <coughs> with the proviso that we um, require that, that the um, <coughs> prescribed um, suspensions be served by the end of May. 2015. Yes. 2015. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Is this a hearing public bodies, public? Yes. Okay. Anybody wishing to comment on this? No, nothing? No? <laughs> no? Okay. So on the motion by Mr. Kuro, seconded by Ms. Mahan, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 So for clarity, these three restaurants uh, uh, are precluded from serving alcohol. They have a suspended license for three days, starting on a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and uh, that must be done before the end of May 2015. Yep. All right? Okay. I'll, I'll, and I'll get a uh, revised draft so that each of you can sign the decision. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Adam? Oh. Um, uh, citizens Open Forum. I don't have a sign in, but I know that we have Gordon here who would like to speak. So <laughs> he has your sign in. Look forward <laughs> he to comes this. bearing gifts. You're, you're rocking those new specs, Mr. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and Angela also is here. Gordon. Yes, sir. Always lovely to see you, sir. Absolutely. Um, I'm Gordon Jamison. I'm co-chair of the Arlington Recycling Committee, and I'm here to make two uh, as brief as possible announcements before I get the hook from Mr. Greeley. Um, so we, we want to remind the board and the people at home and in the audience here that uh, this Thursday, April 16th, from 5 to 9, right down the hall here, um, we'll be celebrating uh, an art opening and a reception of that the art is uh, by one of our members of the Recycling Committee, Ellen, Ellen Calloway, and it's retitled, entitled Recycled Beauty. It's a, it's a photographic examination of all things recycling uh, put together by Ms. Calloway in conjunction with the, uh, the committee and other, other wonderful supportive entities. You can learn more about, she was actually on Chronicle last, thir last, last week. Uh, on their show and as part of their Wasted program. I think that was Tuesday or Wednesday night of last week. You can look there and also there's some information available at, on, on the town website. Uh, again, that's Thursday from 5 to 9 and we'll be serving some light refreshments right here on the second floor of Town Hall. Um, it should be fun. Maybe a few additional polls beyond yourselves will be there. The other um, thing while I'm up here, um, uh, Charlotte Milan, the recycling coordinator, has organized several different tours that the board and other members at home may find of interest. You can now, uh, in this spring, there'll be three different type, three different tours. Um, one will be to the uh, Andover facility where our uh, trash is incinerated as a cogeneration plant. Um, one will be to the new recycling uh, separation facility that JRM has put together. And the third one will be to where some of our other waste goes, Deer Island, which is also an extremely green entity, part of the MWRA. 
So uh, that information has been posted on the town website, so we'd invite people both to come to the art exhibit and see uh, Recycled Beauty on Thursday, as well as uh, sign up for some of these tours. Thank you. Any questions? No. <laughs> Nobody? Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you. Thank you and Angela Olszewski, please. Hello. Hello. Um, I just wanted to make you aware of the activities that are going on for Patriots Day weekend coming up. I mean, everyone knows there isn't a parade this year, but we're told that we'll be back bigger and better next year. Um, but we do have on Saturday and Sunday the Jason Russell House. The Historical Society will be opening the Jason Russell House for the season. So there'll be full house tours from 1 to 4 each afternoon. That's regular admission. But there's complimentary children's activities. And so that's just a couple crafts. There's a little um, cardboard model of the Jason Russell House that kids can color and put together. And we're also asking the kids to come and make their posters for our event on Monday when we greet Paul Revere and William Dawes. And Sunday afternoon, the Monotomy Minutemen will be out on the lawn at the Jason Russell House. Monday morning, Rise and shine early with the Monotomy Minutemen. Um, they'll be doing their usual flag raising ceremonies and burial ground ceremony over um, at the old burying ground to honor those that passed away that day. Um, and that starts at about 745. And then on Monday, we'll be greeting Paul Revere and William Dawes when the Lancers recreate the ride downstairs here. Um, and so the riders are expected on time, they tell me again this year, which will be at around noon. <laughs> they have used to come around 1, but um, last year was around noon, so that's what they say they're coming. Um, and so we'll be having refreshments, and we have a fun little trivia quiz. And if you don't know the answers, you can go visit the markers that are right around Town Hall to get the answers. So we're hoping everybody comes for that. Um, and we're having, uh, at all the events, um, some pastries, refreshments provided by Foodlink. That was the, the food recovery project, which is, you know, a lot of people in Arlington volunteer for that. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, so just wanted to make you, let you know. Um, and the other thing is um, ATED will be planning to open the visitor center again soon. Um, now that the weather's getting warm, um, we're, you know, getting that all set and ready, and I know um, a couple of our committee people have been emailing people to get the site cleaned up so that we can get that going, too. So. That's it. Questions? questions? We, if uh, anybody would like to come Monday and help us greet Paul Revere and William Dawes, too, we would especially appreciate that so we can give them a big monotony welcome, because I know Joe can't be here this year. So, okay. We're trying to figure that out for you, Andrew. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your you. great work, as always. Anybody else wishing to speak on the Citizens Open Forum? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, traffic rules and orders, uh, item, uh, um, uh, agenda item number 11, a request to co-sponsor the Taste of Arlington, Jennifer Tripp, who I don't think is here. David, are you here for that? David Swanson. I'm David Swanson, and um, we'd like to we formally request the town be a co-sponsor for Taste of Arlington 2015. It's scheduled this year for Tuesday, October 20th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. I know many of you are familiar with the event, and it's here at the Town Hall. Each restaurant will have an opportunity to provide a taste-sized sample to attendees. There'll be something for everyone. They're also free to showcase their business with small props and literature about their cuisine. And the benefit to the town is that it promotes business, introduces both new and established restaurants to residents and the workforce of Arlington, which in turn adds tax revenue to the town. And because this is a town-wide event, it fosters goodwill between the town and the business community. It's also a social event with a jazz trio and many people look forward to attending. The town would not need to do any work on this event. Uh, the chamber would take care of all the details. It's our primary source of fundraising. Admission tickets will be sold and there will be a cash bar and complimentary uh, water. In conclusion, we're, hope, we're hoping that the town will once again sponsor this event and make it a successful pro-business uh, event for Arlington. Thank you, any questions? Yes, what food uh, comes out of Swanson Jewelers? I knew you'd ask that, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Carrots, of course. Oh. 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 I was going to oh. say the ice oh. drinks, yeah. Oh. Thank you, David. Second. second. Is there a second? Uh, of the application, not the joke. <laughs> His was better than mine. Uh, 
Uh, comments, discussion? No. Glad to do it again. Thank you, David, very much. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you. Uh, so uh, next, a um, uh, letter to um, you guys, legal counsel. I'm going to ask uh, Adam to discuss this and then ask someone from the board to move to approve that I sign the letter. Mr. All right. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as the board recalls, I believe it was at the last meeting, uh, we had Clarissa Rowe and George Late here to speak to the board about concerns with the 40B proposal that we've learned of at the Mugar site and one of the immediate steps that they requested we consider is sending a letter from the board to the Mugars requesting basically consideration of the town's long-term desire to preserve that land and their concerns, uh, our concerns about <clears throat> the proposed project. After talking with the town's uh, now retained special legal counsel on this matter, they advised us to not uh, get into any hot water with issues of good faith to write to the Mugars counsel as opposed to directly the Mugars. We're still working to confirm <coughs> through that special counsel who Mugars counsel is. Once we do that, we'll put it on the letter, and once you've approved, uh, we'll ask Chairman Greeley to sign it and send it off to them. Move approval. Move approval. Second. Second. Discussion? Yeah, Mr. Carroll. Yes, thank you. I wonder if, if the board, if it's the board's pleasure, I wonder if in the <coughs> next to the last paragraph we could just strengthen the language in one of the sentences. It says the Board of Selectmen believes Arlington has long been supportive of affordable housing initiatives. Well, we have. So I, I wonder if we could just change that to Arlington and the Board of Selectmen have long been supportive of affordable housing initiatives. I was going to bring that up when I thought I was being picky on it, so I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that's not a bad one. No, that's good. Okay. That's good. Uh, no problem with me. Anything else? No. Mr. Dunn? Total uh, strong support, and I think I I'm really hope that we can get a constructive engagement on this going. Okay. So uh, with the amendment, uh, uh, Mr. Byrne made the motion again, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Although now that I've done that, should it be me or should the whole board sign it? Uh, Mr. Hein. I, I think with the vote of the board authorizing you to sign it, I don't think it's an issue. Yeah. It's really yeah. more of an yeah. aesthetic thing than anything else. Plus, let's face it, my name will bring fear to these lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, right. Did you feel them shaking? Right. Absolutely. <laughs> We've won already. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> Item uh, 13 on the agenda. Um, and she's in Florida, but at some point we certainly would like to um, bring Ruth Lewis before us, who has decided to retire as our comptroller and uh, really has done a, a great job for the town of Arlington, but just feels it's time. So uh, in conversations with Adam, I asked Adam if he would uh, take a look at this and maybe recommend to this board uh, a process uh, that we might follow related to uh, this uh, appointment. Mr. Chapterlain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to echo those comments, I know there'll be another time for us all to say nice things about Ruth, but Ruth has been an excellent public servant, and we will miss her very much in serving in the role of comptroller. Uh, though I, I will say I think it's very important that we are moving quickly and getting this on the next available agenda because uh, in her good service, um, you know, it, it's apparent just how important the comptroller is, and this is not a position that we want to take any over amount of time in making sure that we get a good qualified candidate uh, in the position. So uh, after consulting with uh, Chairman Greeley, I put before the board three distinct items that I would like the board to consider acting on tonight. First, uh, I would like the board to consider approving the proposed recruitment process that has been laid out in the memo provided to the board by HR Director Karen Malloy. Second, I'd like approval uh, of the board of the updated job description, and I provided a red line version of that job description so that you'd be able to see what changes were proposed to the job description. And then finally, I'd like your authorization to work with Ruth uh, to identify a number of options for interim accounting services so that once Ruth has retired, we can make sure we get through year-end, close out, and prepare for the audit uh, quickly and cleanly uh, in Ruth's absence. So th those are the three distinct items I'm asking for the board's action on. Okay. Mrs. Mahan. Um, and I've spoken to the chairman about this. I'm going to, because I have an immediate family member who currently <coughs> reports to the comptroller, I'm going to recuse myself on the second um, action requested by, uh, as well as any discussion surrounding that. And I did um, 
consult town council. I don't know if you can just state something briefly on the record in terms of the appropriateness of me being present and voting for one and three. Absolutely, Ms. Mahan. So uh, while Vice Chair uh, Mahan has a family member who is a town employee that reports to the comptroller, the votes requested by the manager tonight are not actually to select a comptroller. Rather, they are to one, identify a process for selecting a comptroller, two, to revise the comptroller's job description, and three, to authorize interim accounting services that would not involve supervision of Ms. Mahan's family member. So in my opinion, the first and third approvals or authorizations sought present no conflict of interest whatsoever barring her participation, and the second, a revision of a job description, very likely doesn't as well, but because Ms. Mahan wants to proceed in an abundance of caution, she's recused herself from that portion of the deliberation. So my suggestion is that the board uh, first take up items one and three, discuss and deliberate on those, and then after you voted on those uh, two things, whether separately or together, Ms. Mahan can recuse herself, leave the room, and we can retrieve her after that deliberation is done. Thank you. Okay, right. And again, a very conservative approach, but you know, smart of you to uh, do it this way, so thank you. So we will take up one and three. So one, approval of the proposed recruitment and screening process as provided by um, Karen Malloy through Adam Chapdelaine. I have a question about it, if I, if I may, Adam. So, of course. So this is on the memorandum from Karen, the recommendation. Uh, she talks about, two a selection panel, all right? And it's led by Chairman Greeley, or designee, town manager, treasurer, school finance officer, right? Uh, and Karen would also serve. Under three, the process, I envision two rounds with the panel. The first round would be shorter interviews, and then uh, and followed by an assessment exercise developed under Deputy Town Manager Andrew Flanagan's financial expertise. Why is he not on the selection panel if he's then doing that in that process? So I, I think what, uh, what Karen meant in writing that is An Andrew's honed a bit of a skill in putting together these financial assessments for a number of positions we've hired over the past few years, so we would ask him to put it together. I, I, I think, um, you know, in, in considering adding him to the panel, or maybe the first round or the second round, you know, have me in one and him in the other, or vice versa, would be a reasonable approach to take. Okay, I mean, it, but should that step take place before the selection panel's second meeting with the candidates? Which step, I'm sorry? The process step where it, where it talks about an assessment exercise developed by Andrew's financial expertise. Is that referencing the one position or each candidate for the position? I'm not sure what that means. So the way, the way we um, have been doing things in the recent past is so we'll, for positions such as this, we'll use both a traditional interview style as well as some kind of exercise. And then the panel that day, so if, if the first cut, let's say, is 10, all 10 will sit for the traditional interview, all 10 will take the exercise, and then when the winnowing decision is made, right. the panelists will think about both the interview session as well as a review after the candidate is left of the assessment that was done. And if that winnows 10 to five, so be it, then you go to the second round with five, you again do some version of a traditional interview, also with some assessment exercises, and then again, the totality of that assessment is made when trying to decide what recommendation to make for a candidate. Other questions, comments? Okay, Mr. Quill. Mine is, mine is just very minor, and, I, and I, first of all, I'll move to approve the, the process as recommended. Okay. Um, second, first, second? Second. Second. And, and my, my comment, I, I don't feel a burning need to have it as part of the vote, just, just something that I'd ask the manager to discuss with uh, Ms. Malloy. I, I noticed the list of um, <clears throat> recruitment websites that, that are being targeted. I wonder if the manager might discuss um, uh, with Ms. Malloy uh, the possibility of uh, LinkedIn, which which I've found has oh, a, yeah. an yeah, excellent absolutely. recommendation and matching engine for a number of um, of professional careers, and I think it's come a, a long way. Um, I, I have no connection to LinkedIn, but I just I've, I've found a lot of success. Yeah, no, I think that's a good a good strategy. Okay, Mr. Dunn. Uh, I just. I was just, when I read it, I was struck by the fact that um, when, we, when we interview for the town manager, we interview publicly several of the candidates. Uh, you know, we, I think we said, I think we had a two to four, and in the end we did two uh, in the most recent round. Whereas this one, we're choosing to 
essentially, you know, delegate that to the chair or his designee, you know, and, and have that person, that chair or designee, bring forward one. And uh, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit and make sure that we we agreed that that's what we really wanted to do. Because you know, we pick comptrollers all the time, so we've got a lot of practice at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you looking at me in particular? No, I'm have? really not. Uh, I'm, 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 th this is definitely one where, I, if I am, it's because of your experience in the hiring for this and the other positions, that the selectmen. Frank, I mean, the only person that we've hired while I've sat on the board is Adam. So, you know, this is relatively new ground for me. Mr. Chairman, may I opine and respond to Mr. Dunn's you comment? You may opine. Yes. <laughs> So I, we, uh, we being me, Karen, and Andrew weighed that very question very heavily. And the reason that the recommendation is worded the way it is is I, people who have chosen the career path that I have found myself in grow used to the fact that they will be publicly interviewed uh, for the position, and I, it just starts to come with the territory. Um, whereas people who are in some of these, you know, they, they're, you know, they're, I don't, I don't know what adjective to use, but there, I don't think people who are in comptroller, town accountant, auditor positions are necessarily geared up for that public interview process. And I'm, and I'm not saying in terms of nerves or stress of a public interview, but rather having to put themselves out there and have their current employer know that they're up for another job yeah. based on a public process. So as not to dissuade any potential candidates, that's why we made this recommendation. Mm. Uh, fully understanding it's the board's jurisdiction and prerogative of which way to go, but that, that's the reasoning mm. behind it. If I may, let me just so, Mr. Hine, therefore, can we do these interviews in private, in uh, executive session? No. Okay. Did you want to think on that at all? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think that the, the, the process that you're, you're talking about, so if you're approving this process, you're sort of allowing yourself to have um, a little bit more uh, flexibility with respect to the layers that you would have sort of be um, subject to sort of a pu more public review. Um, but I, I really think the process is very similar to the, to the town manager interview process. I'm not sure, is there something specific that would, that would give rise to the? Well, the town manager process, we agreed that we told finalists that it would be public interviews, mm -hmm. right? So they knew that in advance. Is that why the third one said no? I don't remember. But no, he, he just he, he withdrew his name at the last. Yeah, we had one who withdrew and one. Yeah. Yeah, and so then we interviewed the two of them. Um, why didn't we choose that other guy? <laughs> but we so, did. but but we have interviewed in executive session before. Uh, not this past time, but the previous time. Remember? Actually, right. even oh, hold on, you've been waiting to speak. Sorry, go. Um. I don't recall inter interviewing in executive session. I, I do recall, you know, negotiations, discussions, um, employee, I don't want to say reprimand, but I, I just wanted to, just to add to the conversation, I spoke to Karen Malloy today in terms of, you know, the comptroller and the position, and I may misspeak with what she told me, but she basically said, because I was kind of having the same question myself, that um, the town has sort of classified certain positions as level one, two, and three, and the comptroller, like I think level one would be like Christine Bongiorno and Joe Conley and a few others. Level two would be comptroller, police chief, fire chief, things like that. And then I guess you're level three. And, and it, it's not by salary, it's by in terms of position as well as um, process and procedure. So I'm just thinking of the way that we also interview, interviewed other level two employees which was the town manager, and we weren't involved. Uh, am I getting the levels wrong? No, no, no. you get them right. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because um, so, I was asking that question, but my thing is try to treat everybody like, like and like, like and the same. So um, I had the same question, but when she outlined that this is a level two employee, then normally this is, you know, the selectman wouldn't be involved, but the town manager would, and he would conduct the interviews the same way, and then announce the final candidate. So I don't know if that adds to anything. I, I think, if if I may, uh, to, to so I guess. I think it may be misunderstood your initial, initial question. So under this process, um, if you're just talking about changing the number of folks who come for the final interview, then no, I don't think you do an executive session. The executive session piece of interviewing is about preliminary screening. So here you're, the process the town manager has outlined, you've basically uh, delegated the preliminary screening process 
to you know the the chair and you know basically a, a group of, of town staff. If you wanted to go into executive session to interview candidates, what you'd be doing that for is to identify the finalists. Does that make more sense? So you, you probably have gone into executive session for interviewing purposes before, but that's a preliminary screening committee. And you can only do that if you're then going to have sort of finalists be presented uh, before the full board, or a finalist, if you will. So you could do that, but you'd really be restructuring the process so that you're basically doing the whole thing by having these preliminary sort of screening pieces in executive session amongst yourselves, and then identifying one, three, five, whatever finalists that would come before the board for a sort of final uh, interview, if you will. In public session. That's right, yeah. yes. Um, but it has me think, I mean, what Diane just went through is all to accept this is directly our appointment. <clears throat> so that does differentiate it from that level thing, which it was, even though it's level two or whatever that means, yeah. must have done. So our, for when we, when we did the last round of town manager, we did do the process where we, we did the preliminary in executive session, all of us. So we were in um, the, the uh, <coughs> Whittemore, Whittemore House and we interviewed a series of candidates and that was how we whittled it down to the three or four. I literally can't remember when we got it to three or four. Um, and we did that privately, and then we did the final process publicly, mm -hmm. and in the, and so I, that makes sense to me. And so if we do, given that any final decision has to be public, and given that we don't want to put a bunch of, or I, I'm persuaded by Adam's argument that we don't want to put a bunch of potential comptrollers who would you know decline to participate because of it. Um, I'm, 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 I've, I've enjoyed the conversation and I've learned, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm ready to go with the original recommendation. Well, but what if that committee recommends two to us and we do... Then we have to do that publicly. Two, right? Then we would have to do that publicly. And, and we make that clear to candidates, right? So, uh, we... Two, I, I, so, so, <laughs> just I'm not the chair. Okay. So, uh, if, if, yeah. if I may, the, the, the sort of executive session piece I think as Mr. Dunn is, is very concisely stated, really only has to do with identifying the finalists. And if you want to have that number be two or one or 10, um, all those finalists would basically be subject to the, to the, open, um, the open meeting process. The, the, the downside, I think, is that the more finalists you have, the more I think what Mr. Chapdelaine is saying will, will be an issue, that if folks feel like, you know, I've got a solid, I've got a solid chance of being in a public meeting on a job that I'm not going to get, it might be difficult for this this particular I class. Can say that. I, mean, I can understand that. So yeah, Adam. So to, to that go. question that you had asked also, though, I, I don't think the board adopting this tonight would foreclose the possibility that the assessment panel, with Chair Greeley taking part in it, says, you know what, this is too close for this panel to call. Let's think about bringing two forward, notifying the two. I'm not going to put your name publicly until you want it public, and then making a decision from there. So it's not saying it's what the goal is, but it wouldn't foreclose that possibility. Okay, uh, I have Mr. Kira, then Mr. Brown. I, I have sympathy for the question asked, but I, I still think that the, the process as, as laid forth it makes sense. I mean, we're putting emphasis on, on the, um, the technical assessment, which is really, th th that, that's the bread and butter of what the comptroller's job is about. I mean, the, the reality of our interaction with the comptroller, unless we're on the audit subcommittee, is, Generally, sometimes it's budget and revenue task force, but generally the, the comptroller is, is not called upon to, to, to uh, be a public figure per se, but rather to be, to be a, a technician and a, and a, and a, a professional. And, and um, I, I would be concerned about de depressing the pool of candidates by, by having more than we absolutely need appear before, before the board for that reason. So um, I think this is solid. I think that if, if the screening committee does find, as, as Ms. Chaplain mentioned, that, that there are more than one, I, I would rec recommend that maybe the chair come back to us and let us know that, that, that you intend to bring more than one candidate forward. Yeah. Mr. Byrne. You know, I, um, I actually was thinking about this more for the new job description, but now that it's come up under this um, discussion, I guess it's worth um, throwing out there. And I, I do appreciate the technical aspects um, being evaluated in this manner. Um, what 
now that we're talking about potentially bringing two candidates up and having you know a, a public discussion for a final choice, for for this role, I I don't think that's a terrible option. Um, this is you know the the, comp the comptroller plays a really big you know kind of watchdog role, yeah. and that's why they're under our board, in my opinion. I think that's um, you know, kind of my, what I see as one of their most important roles is playing that. And I think that separating that out from, um, and, I, and I obviously mean no offense to the manager or his office, and I'm not implying anything would go wrong, but if something was to go wrong, I, I think that the comptroller needs to be comfortable knowing that we are the hiring authority and that we um, are, you know, play a very large role in that. So. They don't feel pressured to, you know, go around potentially someone in town hall that they're working with on a daily basis. So I guess I just wanted to, to make that point, and I, I am comfortable supporting this, but I'm not worried about, you know, more than one candidate coming forward, and I think I'd be very comfortable having that process play out in front of us for that reason. Okay. Yep. Can I just ask Mr. Kiro, um, mm -hmm. just because the suggestion was made, is your vote to um, take action one and two, which is to approve the screening process as well as to authorize? No, I was only mo I was only moving the process. Well, no, only the process. We're going to do one, then three, and then two. Yeah, I just don't want right. to keep going no, back. Okay, that's I fine. I just right. wanted to clarify. Thank you. Okay, I'm all set. Well, but I because if you recuse just recuse yourself, I see why you want to be careful that we don't in, get into a discussion about uh, item number two. Okay, so. Am I right, Mr. Dunn? You did move approval on this? I believe I Mr. Kerr. Oh, Mr. Kerr, thank you. And did you second it? I did it? second. Okay. And we're comfortable with the way it is, but with Adam's caveat that, but that may well be that we end up with two candidates that we think Could should be. Yeah. be brought before the board. Mr. Heim? Mr. Greeley, I just want to, uh, Chairman Greeley, I just want to clarify one thing. You're not actually voting to create a preliminary screaming the screening committee, which is a technical term, yeah. you're voting to authorize the town manager's process, which I just want to make sure we're, we're all clear upon. Are we all clear? Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. So now, item number three, Mr. Chaplain. So n number three is uh, asking the, bo the board, uh, again, based on the board's jurisdiction over comptroller and uh, counter uh, accounting auditing functions, uh, to authorize me to work with Ruth to identify uh, a series of potential options for interim services while this search process is going on, again, so we can process year-end closeout and get ready for the audit. There are a number of retired town accountants and comptrollers who provide these interim services. There's also some agencies that provide these services. So um, I'd like to sort of put together either a few options, present them to the board, and then have the board approve that before Ruth actually retires so that we have something in place. So move approved. Second. Discussion? No. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. And so next, uh, we, we, we um, excuse for recusal purposes, Mrs. Mahan. I'm just going to be on my phone up here. <laughs> okay. So it is now item um, uh, number two, approval of the updated job description also attached to this agenda item. Uh, and Mr. Chapterlane, want to just briefly describe what's different in the job description, please? Yeah, so just to quickly go through it, uh, in the first section under definition, we made it uh, explicitly clear that this position would be uh, expected to serve as the municipal expert in the Munis accounting system. Uh, that's because that is fact, and we need the comptroller to be uh, sort of the output side of the Munis, not the, not the back end database maintenance side, but the output side needs to be the, the Munis expert in the community uh, for the town government. Uh, also to address uh, the fact that right now the current comptroller is paid an additional stipend for her Munis responsibilities outside of the job description. We thought it important to codify it within the job description to make it all part of what is expected within the pay and classification plan. Secondly, under supervision, um, in con uh, conversation with um, one of the board members, uh, we thought it was important to at least uh, mention what one of the parts of the DOR report uh, puts out that just basically advises uh, at least some codification or uh, clarification on uh, the fact that the comptroller needs to have a working relationship with the town manager's office. And that's why we uh, used the term cooperation, the town manager, deputy town manager, but made it still clear that they work under the administrative direction 
of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, a little cleanup language under work environment. I uh, wanted to make it clear that there would be uh, evening meetings that would be uh, frequently have to be attended for the position, so that was clear. Uh, moving forward on to the second page of the job, job description. Uh, this was recommended by both uh, Ruth and Andrew, I believe, uh, just making clear the role in the tax recap process on an annual basis. The comptroller plays a very integral pro uh, part of that process. Uh, the next, uh, and another just uh, clarification for salary projections. The next one is where we want to make clear that there's going to be a transition taking place, moving phones and telecommunications out of this position. My, my goal would be to fully move telecommunications over to IT as the technology transitions from the current phone system that we have now into a technology-based voice over IP system. That project's about to get underway. I suspect by the time we hire somebody, there will still be some telecommunications responsibilities located in the Comptroller's office, and I don't want it to come as a surprise to someone who reviews the job description that there be some transitioning there. I, I say I suspect that will happen uh, because there's currently someone in the Comptroller's office that is primarily an accounting role that has some responsibilities for managing the telecom system and also the two telephone operators that are currently managed by um, the comptroller uh, will have to be moved. So there's just a few further conversations to have with David Good uh, and others to make sure we can do that smoothly before we just rip the band-aid off. So that's what that language is trying to get at. A uh, little cleanup language about the retirement board, uh, adding a certification um, of a certified governmental accountant is a credential that we think would be appropriate. Uh, another mention of municipal accounting systems. And I think that basically covers the proposed changes. I'll say the board. Yeah, Mr. Byrne. Um, so going back to my comment on the um, section one, I, I think I would be, and again, no offense to the town manager's office, um, I, I would like to see, or, or at least have a discussion about taking out the close cooperation with the town manager and the deputy town manager. And um, I do think that, uh, of course, um, I think a working relationship there is appropriate. But I think in um, having that stated so clearly um, does throw off that watchdog role that I was talking about earlier. Um, you know the. I see the controller um, needing to, you know, at times be in a position to make tough decisions that might go against um, potentially the town manager's office. And I think that having that really clear that this is a board of selectmen employee is an important part of this, um, this hiring process and the controller's role. Um, so, you know, I'd, I'd just like to have that discussion and I'd, I'd be comfortable with that removal. And I guess the only other thing I was thinking is where it says up to four employees um, is there, and I think if, would we have to bring back and rearrange this, I you was know, wondering that. Yeah. Um, salary expectations and whatnot if that ever goes above four employees. Yeah. So I'd be, um, I, I think I'd be cautious um, on that line as well. But other than that, I think it's a, a really nice document. Well, if I could just to sure. Joe. But on that second point, couldn't we therefore just say supervise direct employees in paren currently four? Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy with that, that. Yeah, um, that's, uh, that's fine. Does that take care of that, yeah. if there is any? So, sorry. Mr. Thank Mr. you. Uh, actually, uh, Mr. Byrne and I, I think you want similar lines, because that jumped out at me. So I think if we can address that, that's great. Um, as far as uh, making clear the relationship between the Comptroller and the Board of Selectmen, I don't actually have a problem with the language that's in there. What I have more of a problem with is what's missing here. And there is, there is nothing in here that, that lays out a responsibility of the Comptroller to make regular reports to the Board of Selectmen or to make reports upon um, request of the Board of Selectmen on matters. And it, and it seems to me that, that, that it, 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 it is reasonable to ask for you know, an annual or a semi-annual, you know, report, whether it be, you know, actuals to budgeted figures or, or um, you know, where we stand with reserve balances or, 
report to the whole board on the state of the, the audit and, and specific findings or whatnot. That there is no requirement in here for the comptroller to actually come before the board. So it's it's I find that it's difficult for us to exercise administrative um, direction if, if we don't have that type of interaction listed in the uh, job description itself. But I don't have a problem with the language in there about cooperation. Mr. Dunn? Um, so I agree with Mr. Caro about the, put, we should add some, we should talk about reporting. I actually, I think we should similarly talk, put in uh, annual review um, yeah. as a matter of process. I don't know if it needs to be in the job description, but I think we should do it just in the same way, you know, we do the annual review with Adam. I'm very proud of that process and I think we should do it. Um, I, I don't know if that's appropriate for this description or not. Um, I'm curious, Steve, about, um, because in general, I look at the DRR report and I say, you know, it, in, I don't agree with everything in the DRR report, but there's a lot of it I agree with. And this is one of those things that to me was, it was something that I agreed with and I'm part of, and I have a hard time saying, especially if I'm looking to other departments who I frankly am disappointed haven't adopted so much of the DOR report. And I feel like this is where we walk the walk about some of the stuff we're doing. And so I, I need to be persuaded pretty strongly to, that we shouldn't. Uh, uh, okay, Mr. Chaplain. Uh, can, can I respond to multiple fronts? So I do think adding uh, some reporting language and even one line that talks about, uh, so required reporting to the Board of Selectmen as well as uh, an annual review performance by the Board of Selectmen. Something along those lines I think is absolutely appropriate. Um, and uh, to respond to Mr. Burns' comments, again, again with equal due respect back, um, I, I think it's uh, currently works extremely well uh, with Ruth Lewis. I think she is incredibly cooperative with the town manager's office and has also been able to also give us the bad news that she needs to give us sometimes and tell us what we can't or shouldn't be doing. Uh, so I, I don't think that cooperation and a hard conversation are sort of in uh, incongruent goals. Uh, but I do also think that on a day-to-day -day basis, making very clear that it needs to be a cooperative relationship between the town manager's office and the comptroller is a very important statement for the board to make. Okay, yep. I, I might even be tempted to expand somewhat that 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 um, term because I've seen that that it's it's vital that the comptroller work um, cooperatively also with the the school uh, chief financial officer that the comptroller work cooperatively also with our our finance committee as well and and I think that the comptroller's office has performed a, an important function in providing um, you know information and reports to those bodies. Um, as well, I, I, I wouldn't put a reporting requirement per se, but in close cooperation with town manager, deputy town manager, you know, and other school and town uh, financial authorities, state that that, that cooperative relationship is, is expected. Steve, hey, Mr. Um, I, I I think I see where uh, this is going, and um, I. I understand um, the need for a close relationship. I guess I would, and I, let me, I guess I'll start this by saying back when we were doing, um, oh, what's, what was the, um, the coordinated finance, finance stakeholder group. I'm yeah. sorry, that slipped my mind. Um, that was an important thing that came out of it was the tax recap group that Ruth was on, uh, the deputy town manager was on, and I, that was really great work. Um, and I think having all those um, individuals work together um, was, was awesome and something that should continue. But what I would see it as is opposed to having it written in, I'd rather that be a directive from the board upon hiring. I'm saying that we would, we want you to do this as opposed to having it being so clear in the job description. I think that it's our role as a hiring body to kind of lay that groundwork and say, you know, this is what we expect, um, as opposed to having it codified in the job description where perhaps it can be misconstrued. And I, and I think that Ruth has done an excellent job at working with everyone, but I think that's because she was here for so long. Um, having a new individual coming into this role where, you know, everyone, where the, 
manager's office is so involved in the hiring process. Um, really, it, it will feel like, at least to me, how everything will play out is that that is, in, that is an employee not of the Board of Selectmen, but of um, the town in, in general. Um, and, and I guess I, I just, I'd like that line to be clear. And I don't know, I'm open to finding different ways to make it clear, um, but I, I just, I'd, I'd really like to have that um, kind of drawn in the sand, um, if you will. Okay, can I talk at some point though? Oh, but please, ahead, no, no, you can please, no, 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 go, go ahead, ahead. go ahead. Um, perhaps we could change under supervision the sentence to read, works under the administrative direction of the Board of Selectmen in accordance with applicable MGL, town bylaws, and established standards. The incumbent will be required to provide reports to the Board of Selectmen on a, <clears throat> on a at request basis or a timeline to be established by the Board. Uh, also, the incumbent in the position will be reviewed annually by the Board of Selectmen. And then, instead of under supervision, under essential duties and responsibilities, add a small paragraph about uh, the need to build cooperative working relationships with the town manager's office, the treasurer collector's office, the school CFO, and other town financial operating departments. That, that would make me feel a lot better. Okay. I, I'm happy to withdraw and then resubmit my motion to approve it with that. Okay. Second. That's what I with, with the leeway for me to make what I just said work in some, with Karen yeah, and some. Uh, thank you form. very much for that. Yeah. Okay. That, um, thank you. All right. Yes. Okay. So, uh, as moved and amended, uh, but we'll need final wording, but we're, we, we are in agreement otherwise, correct? Yes. yes. I had a motion. I had nothing to withdraw. <laughs> there was no motion, so oh, I still moved. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'll second that. Okay. I thought you just said you withdrew and then... It, I did, but I, I realized there was no motion on the table. <laughs> okay. All right. So, but you are now making... I am now. I am now. Approve am now. The, jo the new job description of the comptroller and we'll see final wording at the next meeting. Uh, further discussion, uh, Mr. Dunn. Sorry, I'm sorry if I didn't say this already. Uh, it is important to me that I get that the uh, part about here about moving uh, telephones out of and into ITAC, I just or into technology. I need to heartily endorse and talk about that. Sorry, <laughs> but I apologize. But but, but but I mean, I'm actually I, I don't apologize. Ten years ago. Annie and LaCour, before she was on the board of Slackman and I started on this path to you know end the data processing committee and actually create information technology. And I'm really proud of that. But one of the <coughs> things that we left undone was solving this telephone thing. And so this is it, it's it's never too late, but you know, it should have been done and I look forward to doing it in the future. Thank you, Mr. Greeley, for your indulgence. Okay. Are you opining again? <laughs> uh, is yes. it the board's understanding that this vote will allow us to move forward with advertising with this, but providing then the follow-up information to the board on the job? That's okay with me, but That's fine. is that all right with That's me? Fine. That's fine with me, yes. Fine. Yes. Thank yeah. you. All righty, so are we opined out? All those in favor, <laughs> please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's important, I'm, you know, it was. I don't mean to be fresh. So, item number 14, you're back up, Mr. Opine Man, Adam. <laughs> is, no, no, that's, it's, a, that's a word, right? It's <laughs> it's a, <laughs> okay, no? we're done, we're done, yeah. What, Joe, no? Sorry. Yeah. It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I, thank you, Mr. Greeley, I thank you, Chairman Greeley. This item is before the board. Uh, state ethics law, uh, conflict of interest law, requires uh, any non-elected public employee who is receiving uh, any potential benefit for an activity that they're taking part in to file a disclosure with their appointing authority. So I've been asked to serve on the ICMA RC, that's the ICMA Retirement Corporation's Client Advisory Board. Uh, they are the sole entity that provides deferred compensation plans to town employees. Uh, so they, again, have asked me to be part of that board. To do that, uh, they would like me to travel to uh, Washington, D.C. to take part in a day and a half uh, client advisory board session. Uh, I do think it's beneficial to the town in that I'll be able to have direct interactions with the people who administer these plans. Uh, I actually do have feedback for improvements they can make in terms of their customer service and some of their plan offerings. Uh, so I think having that face-to-face -face and that opportunity will, will bring a benefit to the town by participating. And if the board approves, then they would authorize the chairman to sign uh, the document. Move approval. Second. Second. Discussion? Yep. Mr. Dunn. I guess just it's worth noting that uh, at least I have my 
you know, of my three thousand dollar stipend, you know, a buck eighty eight or something like that, that goes every two weeks into uh, or in, in every month into the, this retirement plan. So. Oh. My two hundred fifty dollars. Just you know, please look out for it. Send me your feedback. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure other board members here are the same yes. arrangement. Hmm. Begging you. Yep. Discussion. Okay. Hmm. Somebody moved approval. Yes. Mr. Kiro, second by Mr. Byrne. Further discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you. 15, Board of Selectmen designate a Parking Implementation and Governance Committee. Mr. Byrne. I think we were simply asking, uh, th this was an arrangement. Uh, Mr. Byrne was willing to serve on this committee when he was chairperson, and its mm. first meeting is coming after he was chairperson, and I had asked him if he still had an interest. And yeah, I, I am so. definitely still interested in this. I, um, I think this is a very important committee, one that is, um, you know, I wish, we could have acted on this sooner, of course, um, I, just, I think many of my colleagues do, but you know, I think this is aligned um, particularly with what I'm um, uh, studying at school and uh, just something I'm really interested in. So I'm looking forward to um, being the first one to take down the uh, payment um, modules in the parking lot, and uh, I'll let you guys know when that's happening. Move approval. Second. Second. I second it. Further discussion? <coughs> Excuse me. We, want, an, we uh, want pictures of that, by the way, Mr. <laughs> Byrne. Yeah. Mr. Kerr. Such an unfortunate acronym for this committee, but <laughs> I'm happy that, that, that you know, Mr. Byrne will take, Thank take you. the honors. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. <laughs> Item number 16, which is a discussion and to adopt Selectman's Handbook, uh, Licenses and Permit Summary, Parking Summary, Parking Policies and Regulations, Handbook Recap. Um, basically, I think I'm gonna ask you to hold off on this unless somebody has really strong feelings. The reason I say that is, uh, we're gonna, other than licenses and permits, uh, if you all have had a chance to read that, uh, if you have any changes to that page, but otherwise, on the rest of them, you know, it was originally uh, my idea to have in the handbook a one-page summary, like you now have before you on parking uh, policy. But in thinking about it, um, I, I, why bother with that? You know, if you look at how kind of complete that is, why don't we just include the policy uh, in the selectman's handbook? Mm -hmm. But on something like licenses, there is an individual application for each and every one of those licenses. Mm -hmm. So that being in the addendum to the handbook, I can see it making sense. So uh, tonight, I think all I'd like to ask, although I want you know, uh, Marianne, Doug, and Steve, um, who um, have worked very hard on this, uh, to input on this, but our committee's gonna get together on Wednesday morning and we kind of want to see where are we now with this handbook. We, we have done a lot, but where are we and what do we need to do to kind of complete it? So there it is. Who has any thoughts? Steve, do you want to go first? Um, yeah, I actually um, had a couple potential changes, if that's okay. On where, on where on, are we? On um, the parking policies. Okay. Um, the first that I saw that it said, um, if I can, um, where we talked about um, at present, um, the parking clerk receives a $20,000 stipend, um, which I am, compl I, I like that that's there and it lays it out. Uh, Steve, tell us where you are. You're in the oh, policy I'm sorry, now, page, not the summary, correct? Good, correct. Page three in the policy. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay. And so in the second paragraph, it says um, any necessary assistant clerk staffing. Yep. That, is that? No, that's not accurate. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't think that was accurate either. Right, the, the clerk receives a $20,000 stipend, and that clerk may hire an assistant clerk, mm. but certainly not out of that $20,000. Yeah, right? and, I, and, I, um, and, I, and I think that as opposed to any necessary Clerk staffing, if, if perhaps the language was changed to, um, you know, a staff member, as opposed to, I think, when I read it, I, I thought it sounded like there was 
you know, he, the parking clerk could hire whoever they really wanted um, and as many people as they wanted to take on those duties. And I, I think just having that maybe be a little more clear um, might save some confusion uh, down the road. Doug, you got in this, you know what is? Yes. Go ahead, Mary. I was just going to say, could you just say that one more time? Because yeah, we're we striking exactly. Of course. So after on on page three under selectman duties and responsibilities and other parking personnel, um, it says at present the parking clerk receives a twenty thousand dollars stipend for him or herself and any necessary assistant clerk staffing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would, I guess I didn't have the exact language, but I, I would strike you know any necessary assistant clerk staffing, okay. and insert the actual staff you know, number that there is, okay. which I, I believe is one. Um, and, and then in, um, that was the first. And then in the, um, for the overnight parking, as, as I brought up that when we discussed this originally, um, it's where on page four, Sorry, it's actually on page five where it does mention that you get um, eight. Um, you know, you get eight free nights. I, I do think that I would ask if the board would consider pushing that out to fourteen. Um, I think that's, you know, I thought we had. I, I, I thought we had. We, I thought we talked about it. I don't know if we actually took the vote um, okay. to do it, but. So th those are the two changes. Other than this, I, I think Mr. Greeley's done. I know he, he gives a lot of credit out to um, everyone else, but Mr. Greeley's really done an excellent job spearheading this, and uh, it wouldn't have come to fruition without him. Well, thank you for opining on that. Oh, <laughs> 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 David Warren today, right? Yeah, Ms. Mahan? Um, and I, I just wanted to put but, that. But, uh, just for clarity, are we all in agreement that we want, we want to allow the 14, right? Yes. If, okay, all right. And just to review the discussion that we had um, previously, um, I had brought up about having the uh, snow emergency in, in the townwide um, van um, and seeing one incident, my hair, hearing about four or five, but seeing one actually myself where the street was literally blocked for four and a half, five hours. Um, then the town manager indicated that after the um, snow winter season was over, he was going to sit down and assess and evaluate, including that point. So just with the caveat that in the future on page 11 or 12, that there be, I had suggested $100, the highest fine is 200 for like handicap ramp. But if something that, if the town manager agrees, whatever he wants to call that particular violation where there's a snow emergency, a parking ban in effect, and you've totally blocked the street off. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that falls under failing to leave an unobstructed 10 foot lane of traffic. Okay. Um, but you're saying you want that to be a hundred dollar fine? Well, I wanted it. I wanted to see, ask the town manager to see if, in the case of a, of a, you know, the few times we have a parking ban because of a snow emergency, I can see two different things where, you know, <coughs> failing to leave an un unobstructed ten foot lane of traffic, I could see someone getting a twenty five dollar fine for that, in the course of normal, you know, it's regular weather and. You know, usually people can get by anyways, but if there should be something separate um, where um, there's a snow emergency parking ban and you're totally blocking access to a street, a public way. So that's that, and um, if the board, if it's the board's prerogative to add another penalty, it's something that could be considered, but that's the current area of penalty that the enforcement uses if you're blocking a roadway mm -hmm. during a snow emergency. Mr. Greeley. Yes. Um, would, would that not be, um, as opposed to failing to leave an unobstructed lane, is that interference with plowing or removal of snow or ice? If you're doing it while plowing is happening, yes. But if you're just parked on a snow bank and you're blocking the roadway and plowing is done, it wouldn't, it wouldn't apply. Okay. Well, um, I guess um, I, I don't think I'd support pushing that up to 100. I think that's a, that's a pretty steep fine. Um, and a, I just, I've, well, and I'm comfortable leaving it at 25. And, and I think when we discussed this last time, it was noted that, that it's a towable offense, so there is an additional expense. Um, 
They are. It is a serious infraction. <clears throat> what it is, it, I, I saw it happen once and heard about it four times. It, cars couldn't be towed because the tow truck couldn't get down. Oh. I live right near the Audison. Literally, this person parked in the middle of the street, not even across from a double driveway, um, and diagonally across from a hydrant. And the tow truck couldn't get down because the way she had blocked it. And there were cars parked there, even though there was a ban. But everybody understands, as long as you can. And she was there for four and a half hours. So, so you know what, maybe I can just talk to the town manager, see if I can come up with something. In okay. the future, put it before the full board. To me, a $25 fine for blocking a major street like that for four and a half hours just doesn't, you know, yeah. in, in that circumstance. So let me have, if it's okay with yeah. the chairman, I'll have a conversation with the town manager. Yeah, that, And then if the board decides not to do that, that's fine too. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Diamond and Mr. Gerald. On the, uh, this is, not a change so much as a recommendation for a future augmentation. And I, I think I'm, I suggested this in a, in related to a past thing, but it's to request an on-street permit permanent. Uh, we would list the, the bullet points about like what the criteria would be. I really think we could, uh, we would do well to give a few examples of ones that were approved and ones that were rejected because I think that would help people understand more before they get into the process about uh, what criteria is being applied because without examples it's very hard to understand what happens and I think it leads to some false hopes that we could frankly you know t educate people faster in the process if we did that but uh, happy to yes I'm voting yes this is just for <laughs> a future improvement okay but what you, so we're on page six am I to request an on-street permit permanent yep. what you're saying is you'd like two examples uh, one example, one we approved, and one example, one we did not approve. I think that it might even, because uh, it, we might even need more than one each. Yeah. Because, for instance, uh, for medical conditions, we could explain, you know, in this case we said yes because of this medical condition. In this case we said no because they had this option. In this case we said yes because uh, they literally, there is no frontage. In this case we said no because they could put a driveway in, they're just choosing not to. Like, you know, I think we should talk about all each one of those but we can't put in an address right you're not saying we specifically uh, right because that's correct right yeah um, I, I think picture frankly if you, if you just took some of the pictures and you didn't say what street it was from some of our past cases I think that would probably be okay yeah can I just yeah mm -hmm. just for consideration of what mr. Dunn was saying oh you would uh, oh, uh, after mr. Carroll no yeah. no but you want to comment on what? Yeah, what that's, okay. Said. that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I'm just thinking of one of the things in terms of highlighting examples. Mm -hmm. It might be beneficial to highlight the example because we get it so much that um, just because your landlord has a driveway and says you can't use it doesn't mean that's that exactly you the type of thing. Yep. I think that would help a lot, especially when we got a piece of correspondence today about that when people are considering yep. renting or owning. So just I would put that as maybe one of the case scenarios. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Mr. Greeley, thank you. Okay, Mr. Carroll. Thank you. Thank you. The great work. It's really, really, this this is uh, great. I just had a couple comments. The licenses and permits summary. I'm really happy to see a comprehensive list of all the licenses and permits that we're responsible for. And and to uh, steal your phrase, Mr. Greeley, I tingle with anticipation for the first time we issue a fortune teller license. I think we should appoint them directly to the Long Ridge Planning Committee. Uh, <laughs> we have you know. we have, we have. Yeah. Of us, I'm, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure um, the only thing I would say uh, about this page is um, this is all very very helpful but um, it seems like in some cases here I guess in all cases we're listing how many uh, licenses are outstanding but we're not listing what the maximum number is that that's available in some cases like taxi cabs and, and um, you know, all alcohol package stores and restaurants, we do have maximums. It would be helpful to me if we had the, the maximum allowed and the, the current number issued here as of whatever date this is, this is printed. It's just, just as reference. Um, on page eight, of parking, <coughs> excuse me. Um, transferring merchandise in municipal public parking places prohibited. Um, I think I understand the intent of that. Does that not cause a little bit of um, 
ambiguity with the, the farmer's market? It does, um, but that had been considered at one point in time. I, I don't have the point when it was, but um, was deemed during the farmer's market when you approved that, that that would This be, question was raised? Okay, yeah. Yeah. I, okay. I'd have to go back and read some minutes, but it, it had been questioned in the past. Okay. Just want to make sure we're not putting something in there, then we're, mm -hmm. I mean, we're obviously not banning you the farmer's market. could say something like with selectman approval, or, yeah. or if you'd like, if that... I think I'd feel comfortable with that. Mr. Mr. Um So I'm, I'm thinking about Mr. Securo's point about the licenses. And, and I do think that that's helpful information. But do, do you think it would be, con would, what about adding a line like contact office about um, to inquire about the number as opposed to having it in this? So about the number have, outstanding. So, yeah, the so number currently have to change issued. it. I agree. No, I agree. I totally agree. Yeah, because I do think I totally that's helpful agree. information. I but totally maybe agree. if um, maybe if we just have a line like that instead of having to totally you know, agree. rechange it every time. I totally agree. But I think it would be helpful to have the maximum mm. number in here. Yeah, where, where there is a maximum. For those few where there's a maximum. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only other comment I had is uh, I really like this this last page, which I think was just provided as reference for us, the handbook recap. I, I like to suggest that we include a page like this with the revision history um, in the, the, the final handbook so that we know exactly when each policy in, in the handbook has been um, adopted. Mm -hmm. I think it's very helpful. Yep. That's it. That's all my comments. Oh, sorry. I thought you were all stunned when I oh, chimed that's okay. in Secure. Sorry about that's that. That's okay. Oh, I did too. Sorry. And just to get back to your uh, point, just to put something on the table for consideration for licenses and permits, maybe for the four or five licenses and or permits that are maxed out, yeah. maybe we just put an asterisk next to those and then on the bottom just put a footnote asterisk. Yeah. This indicates, you know, this permit or license is maxed out isn't the yeah. wrong word, but that might be an easier way maybe to accomplish some part of that. So I'm not saying that has to be done. I just wanted to put that out as a suggestion. Yep. That's fine with me too. If you, okay. <coughs> I think that's easier than going through all of them because mm -hmm. sure. it is only four or five where it's a limited sure. number anyhow. So. I think it would but this is helpful reference for oh, us, no, I think, to know this number every once in a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Anybody Schmitt. else? So again, I, so let me ask someone to move approval on licenses and the permit summary, please. So moved. And seconded? Second. And with, that's going to be amended with adding an asterisk beside those where we have given out all of the licenses that we have available with an asterisk at the bottom that says no, li no further licenses available as of whatever date mm. at this time. All right, Marianne? Okay. So then if you go to the parking policy summary, my question to you is do we want to bother including that in the handbook or just keep going now and you come to table of contents and just include the whole parking summary uh, in the whole parking policy in the handbook itself? You see what I mean? Why bother with the one page summary? I guess is what I'm asking because I think it's pretty thorough. Uh, why not just include the whole policy? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. No Chairman. problem. Sorry. Except no, unless, unless, Sorry. unless, no, go ahead, Doug. Go, go. Yeah. Uh, so the, another option would be that, just to remind the board, uh, and the, the sort of handbook summary prepared by Ms. Uh, Sullivan is really helpful. You guys are going to have a, 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 a sort of a product that is approved but ultimately is going to be revisited once it's all together to make sure that the complete version um, is serviceable for what your needs are. So, you, so whatever you guys vote, we can move things around once you've got a complete version. The, the, the integral piece now is to have updated policies so that we're not just, you know, trying to have such a massive enterprise um, uh, before the board all at once so that we're doing the substantive piece of it, but in terms of the aesthetic piece of it and how usable and user-friendly it is, 
um, we can revisit all of these issues in terms of organization and whether the one sheets are necessary or not necessary for each thing uh, once it's sort of all okay. compiled together. Okay, so then let's do this. Leave the parking policy summary alone, just forget that page, and let me have someone make a motion to approve the final on the parking policy itself with the changes that were brought up here tonight. So moved. Second. Okay. Was that all right with everybody? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Uh, Marianne and Doug, are you clear? Uh, um, <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, you know, do we need to review or? No, no, I'm clear on the above. Uh, I guess with the summary, the parking policy summary, we're going to leave that. Just leave that out for now. That's leave not it out. approved. Okay, or that's anything. what I wasn't. And, and then I we'll think leave Doug's, the... Doug's point is once we have all of this, we'll kind of then go back and say, all right, do we need a one page here or not? Right, okay. Doug? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we did approve the licenses and that, that summary, permits and summary as a one page. Mm -hmm. And we then approved the actual parking policies and regulations. Okay. All right. Which we had done before, but I understand we've made a couple of changes now that we've seen it in, in the writing. Okay? Uh, thank you all. And as I say, our committee is going to meet. The, uh, you know, the history of the Board of Selectmen uh, is out there. Uh, code of conduct uh, is something that's out there that uh, we need to discuss and see whether or not we want it included. And you see that. Uh, handbook recap at the very end there. That's what, that's what we as a committee will be discussing on Wednesday morning. It's like, where are we and where are we going from here? So thanks for your patience on this project. Thank you. Okay, uh, final votes and comments. Article 14, 15, 18, and 45. Move approval. Move approval. Second. Is there a second? Yes, Mr. Dunn. You know you can't, get by, you can't do these things without <laughs> me having a comment, right? We still so, love you. Uh, under Article 15, uh, this is one of the, the, it's a challenging one because I think we all reached our uh, conclusions, not necessarily through the same reasoning. Mm -hmm. and, but the same, and so there's a number of things here that I don't necessarily particularly consider my motivation, and I'm not suggesting that we remove them. Um, but I do have something here that I, there's one, mo the reason that particularly motivated me that I would like to highlight more strongly, and I want to talk it over with the rest of the board to see if the rest of the board agrees. So, top of the third paragraph, it says, additionally, it must be noted that the Board of Assessors has not expressed support for either of these changes in isolation. So, I think that, it, and I, I don't think anywhere else, I think the Board of Assess Assessors explicitly said they don't want these changes, mm -hmm. and I think that we should acknowledge that. And I don't think that that's anywhere, I, 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 didn't, I don't think we said that boldly or strongly enough, that, and separately, and that, their choice to say no was one of my strong motivators. And so I'd prefer to change that first sentence and break it off from that paragraph and make it a paragraph by itself. I, I think it is important that, it is, you know, I'm not saying that it has to have, it doesn't have a word count that it has to have, but the assessor said they don't want it. Mm -hmm. We were not inclined to go against their wishes in this particular something, you know. So with the, Feedback from the board, I would prefer that, that content, the comment be updated that way. I concur. I concur. Doug? I believe Mr. No. Chair. No, I concur with that. I have another comment, a separate comment. <clears throat> so um, if, if you'll indulge me for just a moment, uh, this does have to go to print um, this week, ideally. Thursday? I would be happy to approve it with. I would be happy to uh, to like approve it with our amendment and uh, to the to the final judgment of the chair, you know, something like that. Like as in, give the like we approve and we give the power to the, to Kevin to. Of course. Yeah. So like I think that would work. Okay. I, I I'm okay with that, and I think I, I think it should be shouldn't be hard to articulate what Mr. Dunn is uh, is, is saying that needs to be worded more um, clearly and decisively. It matters to me. That's of course. why I'm here. Sorry. So, but just to be clear, basically, the board followed the recommendation of no action by the Board of Assessors. I mean, I know you want to say differently than that, but that's basically what you wanted clear. We took their input on it, I believe. I, I, want, the, I want their opinion to be recorded in our report so that no one, is, no one is questioning what the Board of Assessors said when they talked to us. Okay. And I think it should also say that we that that was, at least for some of us, a strong uh, reason that we reached the conclusion that we did. It was for me, too. I'm glad to say okay. that. So, yeah. 
Okay, Doug, is that? Yes. All right. Okay, so is yours on a different article or same? Oh, it's article? this article. All this right, article so keep little, going. Yep, go ahead. Just three typos. Uh, I noticed. I'm sorry. Um, on the first vote, it says from and elected to an appointed board. It should be, obviously, that's and, that's and not and. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Uh, the vote count was actually uh, three to one. Well, three one zero actually. Mr. Grayley recused himself. I believe. Yeah, that's correct. Right. I, I've got that reflected. I was in the negative on, on that vote. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I also noticed in the first paragraph, it, it refers to select men, Greeley. He, he is larger than life, but he is one, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. Do Thank you. Okay, so those are the two changes to Article uh, 15. Anybody have any changes to 14, 18, or 45? No. Okay, so all those in, in, uh, all those in favor of final approval of these votes and comments, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. All right. And then correspondence received. Move we'll receipt. Second. Second. Uh, any, do we need any discussion on when it's not to be sent to the TAC? Correct? It's coming from the okay. level. All right. All those in favor, please signify of receipt, please signify by saying aye. 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 As opposed. New, bus <coughs> new business. Mary Ann. Uh, no, actually, no new business. <coughs> Mr. Hine. No new business. Mr. Chapter Lane. Got a little bit of a list. He's tonight. got a list going on. <laughs> oh. Uh, all, all good, all good. Uh, one, uh, first piece of new business in coming out of this tough winter for businesses in Arlington, uh, the planning department and uh, particularly economic development planner Ted Fields uh, is going to launch this week a shop local program that will include banners, signs and storefronts and also a punch card game that was uh, actually just copied from something that Cambridge was doing where you'll receive a raffle card. If you shop at a certain number of uh, local businesses, they'll sign the card. Once you've got enough, you'll be entered into a raffle to win gift cards donated by various stores in Arlington. So we're just trying to put together a little program to try to rally some support for, uh, for local businesses in Arlington. I think we have 18 businesses uh, so far who have donated a gift card, all in $25 increments to the program, and we expect to have upwards of 24 or 25 participating. So uh, expect to see more uh, coming out this week with details on the program. Uh, moving on from there, uh, Mayor Walsh in Boston is putting together one Boston day uh, on Wednesday to commemorate uh, the two-year anniversary of the marathon bombing. But instead of just commemorating the tragedy of that day, uh, using the opportunity to really bring to light the kindness and the collaboration and the great efforts that people all over the region do on a daily basis. So he's asked all uh, cities and towns in the region to take part in that. So we'll also be doing that. We'll be putting out some stuff on social media as well as town notices about our participation. Uh, there'll be a moment, a moment of silence in the afternoon, but also we'll, we're gonna try to find some instances of uh, you know, acts of kindness uh, in town that day and, and push them out via social media channels. Um, preview of something that will be coming before the board in the future. We are close to uh, coming to terms with Winchester on a regionalization of veteran services uh, mm -hmm. with Jeff Chunglow. Uh, so we would need to put together an intermunicipal agreement uh, for the board to approve. What we're looking at right now would be a six month pilot from July 1st to December 30th with an assessment to begin on December 1st to see how well it's working and see if we want to continue it. So uh, it's a very small stride, but I think an important stride. Uh, so there'll be more to come on that. Uh, uh, and and that it is Jeff Chung, though, am I understanding? Correct, correct. yeah. Okay, All yes. Right. We're loaning him to Winchester is what we're doing. For a price. Okay. Uh, just as I was walking in here, I saw that the president finally did uh, order FEMA funds uh, for the blizzard from January 26th to 28th. Uh, so there'll be certainly money coming from that, and it also said there was still a decision being made on the follow-up storms. Um, Wednesday morning, the Chamber of Commerce is holding an event right here in Town Hall uh, where myself and Ted Fields are going to address uh, attendees from the business community. They're calling it the state of the town, though I hesitate to say that in front of the illustrious chairman who will be giving the real state of the town in just a few weeks in town meeting. Uh, just want to let you know about that. And then finally, a uh, piece of good news, uh, DHCD has given the town a $15,000 housing grant uh, to produce a housing production plan, which is actually the first 
implements, uh, implementation step from the housing element of the master plan. So that's uh, a good sort of kickstart to getting uh, implementation of the master plan started. Can I have a question? Of course, um, when you were at Finance Committee the other night, and I was watching it from home, I know there was a question about storm reimbursement, and I think you said $118,000 or $188,000. Is this new uh, declaration of the first storm, January 26th through 28th, as a federal disaster, does that mean we'll be receiving fu funds um, ab above and, and on top of that original figure that you gave to FinCom, or is that what you were? No, so what we had given to FinCom was what we would claim if FEMA did allow reimbursements. I, I don't have that data in front of me. My recollection is for all of the storms in February, we would be claiming uh, what would result in a 75% reimbursement of $750,000. Mm -hmm. I think Maybe for just okay. yeah, I think for just the January storm, it was 150,000. So what this would be saying is now it's official that the federal okay. government is going to foot that bill, and sometime probably in the next 18 months, we would mm -hmm. be receiving some kind of reimbursement. Thank you. Thank you. I'm done. Well done. Good stuff. Thank you. Mr. Byrne. Uh, thank you very much. Um, just like to comment on the DHCD grant. I, um, I think that's coming at a really good time and um, with all these new guard discussions going on, I'd like to see how um, perhaps that housing plan can play a role in you know, stopping that, any potential development that comes along there. Um, and other than that, I, I just have one comment. Um, we have five new firefighters in town, uh, graduated last week. Um, Ed Buchler, Paul Flynn, Richard Gallagher, Chris Mansfield, and Brandon Stratton. So um, I, know, I know a few of those guys, and um, very welcome additions to town. And um, I know they'll serve that department well. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mm -hmm. um, I just have one thing. Um, I just want to let everybody know here and at home, on Friday, April 24th, at the Sons of Italy, starting at 7 o'clock, we're having um, sort of not a, not a fundraiser, but a celebration. It's called an evening of comedy for Bob Jerabo. Um, he was kind of dealt a real four or five real serious hands um, in terms of uh, medical issues that he has to deal with. And when we asked him, you know, can we do something for you? Can we have a fundraiser for you? He basically said, no, I'd like to get together, have a celebration, and if, if there were any monies raised, that it go towards a scholarship. So um, I just wanted to let everyone here know about that as well as everyone at home. I mean, typical of Bob, you know, he's really facing some serious um, uh, battles ahead of him and he doesn't want anything for himself. He wants, if anything, he basically said, just, just remember me. So um, we're having a fundraising night. We're going to have some comedians there. Lots of businesses have donated um, items, you know, that will raffle off to um, establish a scholarship in his name. And then the only other thing I would ask is that you just keep him in, his, in your prayers um, and give him strength for what he's about to face. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carroll? No new business. No, Mr. Dunn? None. Well, the only thing I have is uh, we need to make sure that three of you are going to be able to be there Wednesday night, right, for the cable. Yep, for the I'll be there. I'll be there. Yes, yes. And uh, so, therefore, Mr. Dunn, we need you to run it, sir. Right? Oh, really? Because I'm, I'll be in New York, and Mrs. Mahan can't be there. And I believe that makes you the senior member of the three that will be there. Okay. We made those handbook changes. <laughs> All right. And so, uh, and okay. Sounds good. Right. Well, that's how it always would have gone. Was it? Yeah. So what you're saying is that this is a meeting I have to wear a tie. Uh, am I saying that's a meeting where he has to wear a tie? Pro probably. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, the mayor is holding <laughs> at yes in the back of the room. Can we, can we reschedule it to after Memorial Day so I know? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, uh, move moved, a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Uh, the next meeting of the Board of Selectmen will be April 27th. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, we, we is adjourned. <laughs>